Welcome to the Lancaster Patriot Podcast. My name is Chris Hume, Managing Editor of the Lancaster Patriot. Joined today once again by Joel Saint, Pastor of Independence Reformed Bible Church. Joel, thanks for joining me. Good to be here once again. All right, Joel, today we're talking about uh, the news about Uganda. Okay, so we have a new law passed in Uganda, and we have some people upset about that over here. Ted Cruz, President Biden, uh, and others as well. And we want to talk about this Anti-Homosexuality Act uh, in Uganda. All right, so we're going to get into the response from Ted Cruz, a U.S. Senator in Texas, the response from President Biden. We want to talk about what this law actually is. And uh, also we have some other elements to talk about here with just the conservative movement's uh, response to things like this. So uh, let's first talk about this bill. Now, this, or this law that was signed by President Yoweri Museveni, and I'm probably going to say that wrong in every other Ugandan name as well in this episode, so let's just get that right out front. Um, but but this, this law, Joel, was touted by the New York Times as one of the world's most restrictive anti-gay measures. Okay, So this, this has been in Parliament in Uganda for a couple months. Um, they ended up changing it a little bit. Uh, I think some of those changes were actually for the better. We'll talk about those. Uh, and now was signed recently by, by the president of Uganda. All right, so um, the bill, let's, let's get into the bill here uh, briefly, introduce it, and then we'll talk more about it. it. So it's known as the Anti-Homosexuality Act of 2023. And uh, the text says, an act, well, there's a lot to the text, I'm going to read this first part, an act to prohibit any form of sexual relations between persons of the same sex to prohibit the promotion or recognition of sexual relations between persons, persons of the same sex and for related matters. So they're, they're dealing with this issue of homosexuality. And um, when, when they were you know, arguing this bill in Parliament, some of these legislators, which by the way, I think only one parliamentarian voted against it in, in the Uganda you know, Parliament. So one of the legislators a couple months ago said, our Creator God is happy about what is happening. I support the bill to protect the future of our children. Okay? And that, that was a common theme over and over again with these parliamentarians in Uganda. We need to protect the future. We have no future um, with this, and we need to protect our children. Uh, there was another member of parliament who was photographed with a shirt that said, Say no to homosexuality, lesbian, gay, down with Babylon, up with hope. All right, so this is, this is what's happening in Uganda. For those who don't know just a little bit about Uganda, I had to do a little research myself. Um, Joel, from the Voice of the Martyrs, they consider Uganda a majority Christian nation with many active churches. They do know that there is some opposition to Christianity from Islam, especially on some of the, some of the borders of the nation. Uh, Operation World says so that some consider Uganda one of the most truly Christian nations in the world and that it has one of the world's highest proportions of evangelical Christians. So this is a nation that uh, certainly has Christian influence. Uh, and so let's, let's talk about what's going on uh, with this bill. Um, now the bill, we'll talk about it. The bill says there can be life imprisonment if you are convicted of a homosexual act. And then for aggravated homosexual, homosexual acts, um, the penalty can be up to including death. And, and some of those would be um, if you... It sounds like homosexual rape, I guess. Yes, yeah. exactly. Against the child, um, if you are the parent of the child, and you do that. If you, it's committed against an old, an elderly person, if it's committed uh, via means of threat or force, all those things are considered aggravated homosexuality, and the penalty could be death. So, Joel, I want to play a clip here, but before I do that, what's your, what's your initial reaction here? I mean, here's a country, Uganda, that is, um, you know, considered to be one of the most truly Christian nations. Now, of course, we have a lot. Maybe we could say that. They need to change, but I mean, who are we as America to sit in judgment on Uganda here when they're taking a stance on this? What, what's your initial reaction to this, Joel? Well, yeah, a few things. First of all, as far as aggravated assault on children, um, that could be death. Okay. Um, what, any, any idea of what our um, for child rape is here in this in this country, uh, homo, homosexual or otherwise? I mean, I, I don't think it's that big a deal anymore. And so, uh, to your question, who are we to tell them? I, honestly, it seems like child uh, assaults on children seems to be getting to be a smaller and smaller offense 
right here in our own country. So we're uh, kind of like strike one or strike two when it's time to go to tell other countries uh, how, how they're supposed to be. The other thing I'd like to, uh, I want to say is uh, I have a friend in Uganda and, and he, is, he is trying to print Christian textbooks for the schools there. Now the schools are often Christian schools. I'm not sure exactly how their school setup is, but he's trying to uh, write Christian curriculum because the UN is writing a lot of their curriculum. So um, it's, it's heartening to hear that the UN's uh, curriculum has not had the effect that, uh, it, that they're looking to have it uh, done. So that's, that's a good thing. And who writes your curriculum is important. Just heard a podcast yesterday, and the podcaster was making the point. It was actually a sermon, and the pastor was making the point that Jeroboam, he sets up the, uh, the golden calves, and he says, these are your gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You know, so they knew that they'd come out of Egypt, but how long would it take, a generation or two, with uh, that kind of education to, for you to be completely wrong and really believe that this idol took you out of the land of Egypt here? Right. And so education is uber important. I'm glad the UN education appears to be failing. Hopefully it'll fail miserably, and hopefully Uganda can become, in the next generations, a thoroughly Christian nation like the United States of America was at one time. And it was at one time, I was just reading recently some of the, uh, some of the words or, or, or the opinion of Holy Trinity versus the United States where Justice Brewer came out and said flat out, it's a Christian country. Right. It's almost like, a, uh, for him it was almost like a dumb question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, you know, now maybe we have some lessons to learn from Uganda here. I'm trying to apply the biblical worldview. And I think we'll, we'll, look, we'll see in this clip, you mentioned the education. I think that's brought up. I don't know if it's going to be the one I play now, but that they're seeing this stuff uh, being taught to the children. And, and that makes sense coming from the outside. And that's another big part of this. These pressures coming from the outside. We'll talk about that a little bit with Biden, President Biden's statement. Oh, we're not going to give you money anymore. And these parliamentarians in Uganda saying we need to, we, we need to be sovereign nation here. Yeah. And we can't be manipulated, uh, especially on matters like this. So... Let's get into it, Joel. Let's play this clip. This is a clip. I think this is a South African uh, news network. And I think the, the gentleman, uh, the woman anchor here is going to be talking with the gentleman who I think is in Uganda. And she's going to be asking him, you know, what's going on there? Uh, you know, wh wh what, what's the news on the ground? So let's watch this clip and then we'll talk about it. Thanks for staying with us. Ugandan President Chiwere Museveni has signed a controversial anti-LGBTQI plus bill into law. Activists have seen this move as a slap in the face of human rights. Uh, there have been calls for the president not to sign this bill into law. SABC News correspondent Michael Baleke is uh, standing by to speak to us. Michael, let's uh, thank you so much for your time. Let's start by talking about, you know, the reaction to this on the ground, because some have seen it as a move that is the, among the world's harshest. Hi there. Well, that will sound like that, um, that, well, that the bill uh, or the law now is a very harsh law. Uh, what, let me first say this. The, this law, I mean, the Anti-Homosexuality Act, uh, the Anti-Homosexuality or Same-Sex Relationships have been illegal in Uganda for quite some time under the old law. But this new law, of mm -hmm. course, now criminalizes the act of homosexuality. And I would say that uh, locally here, many Ugandans are excited about the president's decision, signing it into law, because it has been a big debate on the streets for religious leaders in churches, in mosques, and everywhere, even in parliament. Uh, people's representatives have been um, speaking loud and tough on, on, on homosexuality in Uganda because of the issues that had come up that was being promoted in schools, it was being promoted, you know, everywhere in, uh, by children in cartoons and all this uh, and that. But I would say on the global scene, well, it has attracted uh, heavy and heavy condemnation. We have seen the Speaker of Parliament lose uh, her U.S. visa uh, immediately after the president signed the law. And then we have also seen now the Global Fund threatening to pull uh, out of the HIV AIDS tuberculosis war. Uh, we have seen uh, PEPFA, the US president um, uh, program on HIV. We have also seen the UN AIDS condemn uh, this law. So on the international scene, it's a gross human right. But locally here in Uganda, people are excited uh, about the decision of President Museveni. Real 
identifying as gay or as LGBTQ is not criminal. But if you're caught physically having that kind of, uh, you, you know, and when, when you're in the act, that is criminal and you could face life in prison. But also, they are thinking, um, if you're gay but you rape someone, you rape someone who is vulnerable, have sex with a minor, or have sex with, you know, if you know you're HIV positive and you have sex with someone, that is aggravated and they think the maximum penalty should be death. So, yes, they are, they are quiet and they're silent and it's kind of a somber mood for them. But for the rest of the public, the majority think this is good for the country. You know, Chris, I can't help but think of the producer of the video, right, Be behind the scenes somewhere, behind wh wherever they sit, you know, watching the feed, right, with his finger on the button, right, <laughs> get this guy off of here, right? He said, hey, you know what, in the international scene, I, I get it, but the people here are very much in favor. He's actually said that twice. Yeah. So where's, where's democracy now, Chris, I want to know. Right. I, yeah. I, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Where, is, where is it now? And, and, and where is self-determination? We have people over here in the United States saying, well, we're going to punish you and so forth. Where's democracy now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, President Biden called this uh, the dangerous, po this democratic backsliding. Oh, oh okay. De democratic nice Christian term. Yeah. yeah. Democratic backsliding. Yeah, I mean, I love that, that, that guy, that news yeah. guy. I mean, he's like, well, yeah, I guess you could say on the international scene, but, uh, but here, I mean, people are happy. They yeah. love it yeah. because... Again, they're trying to protect their children yeah. in the future. Yeah, and this, from what he's saying, this isn't being sneaked through here at oh, all. Oh, no. He said people are talking about it on the street, and it's something that everybody knows about, is what he's saying. Yeah, yeah, and he mentioned the, the education. He mentioned cartoons. I don't know, it's kind of hard to understand him there. He said, but this stuff, homosexuality is being promoted in the education, in the media, in the cartoons for the children, just like we see here. And, yeah, he's saying, hey, the people in Uganda, they want this law. Yeah. They, they, they want this law. Well, well, you know, speaking of down with Babylon, up with hope, I mean, think about that. You know, the, when, you're, when you're in transgenderism, a homosex, you can't have your own children. So you have to. You're going to have to groom other people's children. No wonder they feel like this is a good thing. You know, their children are at risk, as our children are, Chris, here in this country, from groomers. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they just are. They're not going to have their own. Yeah. Now, if you read this bill, you can find it online. It was kind of hard to find it, but uh, I did read through. It's 19 pages. It's not that long. And uh, they have these definitions, which I guess you have to have now. For example, they have female person means a person born with a female sexual organ. So, I mean, again, these guys are they're thinking clearly, but like, hey, we got to define this just in case anybody <laughs> looks at looks at this. Bill. <laughs> they have to define that for the Americans. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was that was put in there for President Biden and Ted Cruz, I guess. So, okay, let's get into a little bit of these specifics here. Then I want to bring in the response of, of the American Ted Cruz and Joe Biden and even uh, some others here. So, um, all right, let's just talk about this bill briefly, this act, I should say, uh, where we agree, where we disagree. First of all, the general direction of this thing, seeking to punish evil, seeking to protect the future, we would say this is a good thing, right? It absolutely is. I mean, if the civil magistrate is to punish evil, and homosex is evil, according to... Um, that word which is forever, forever settled in heaven, the Bible, then this is a no-brainer. And, it, you know, also, Chris, if, if the Bible just said, well, you know, you shouldn't do it, but, hey, everybody do their own thing, fine. That'd be one thing. But the Bible actually has specific penalties, and certainly Paul in Romans talks about the fact that this acceptance of homosexuality is going down the road of some really big-time, shall we say, um, failure to understand reality, to understand nature, and, and apply ourselves to it. Chris, if we will deny re reality, re reality ultimately will not deny us. Reality will ultimately hit us over the head. And I don't know, you, 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 know, you introduce homosex, transgender, all, all that thing, abortion, right? Well, are you surprised in a couple of generations that there's nobody left? I mean, is that like, is that a surprise to people? Right. Yeah, now you mentioned the Bible, of course, and it's, we're going to look later at a, at a clip from Charlie Kirk, which is not directly about this Uganda thing, but it's related. And Charlie Kirk is going to say, you know, I believe the Bible is the greatest book of all time, and yet in the context, he basically ignores it. And so here we have the same thing. Like, if you believe the Bible, which, of course, Ted Cruz would, would claim to, what do you, how are you you're rejecting what the Bible says about this, this sin and this crime? So... 
by general direction, good thing. I mean, encouraging, right? Like, yes. obviously, none of, nobody yes. wants, we don't want to see um, anybody executed. Yeah. And we'll talk about the life in prison thing, but we don't want to see that, but we want to see first life protected. Sure. Yeah. W will the children of Uganda be safer as a result of the passage and the enforcement of this bill? I think the answer is easily yes. Right. Easily. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So kudos to Uganda going in the right direction here. And we'll talk about, I mean, and they've been thinking about it. And these are, these are the, the questions and the discussions that we should be having. I mean, this is, this, this is the stuff that a biblical community, nation, these are the issues they should be wrestling with and debating. How do we deal with this evil? As opposed to in America, we're saying, well, how can we trans the kids and how many babies yeah. can we murder? So this is an encouraging thing, I think, for Christians. It should be encouraging for Christians all over the world. Now, I'm not sure, you know, if Christians will respond that way to it. You think so? I mean, I think some Christians might say, oh, this is so horrible. I mean, like Ted Cruz, who, who, who claims to be a Christian. Yeah, his father's a pastor and all this kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. So let, we'll get into that in a minute. So, but you're, you would be encouraged by this. I would be encouraged by this. You would encourage Christians to see this as moving in the gen right yeah, direction. No, no, no question about it. Um, there are those who say, well, you know, in, in the past, uh, there have been anti-homosex laws that have been repressive. Oftentimes when you look into them, Chris, you find out that what was happening was that little boys were being sodomized. And that's what they were aiming at. Not that they weren't aiming at the rest well, but that, that's been such a problem. And I have read that um, people, you know, young boy, well, boys who have been exposed to homosexuality have often been, the majority of the time, have been exposed by an older man preying on a, on a young child. Yeah, yeah. And obviously there can be lots of consequences from that. And the Ugandans are saying, we, we don't want that to happen to, yeah. our, to our young boys, to our children. So, you know, very good. Obviously, again, people could say, well, Uganda also has this problem going on. They have this going on. How are you guys commending them? Well, as I said, I mean, America has a lot of problems going on yeah. as well. You know, yeah. murdering millions of babies. Um, I didn't look into Uganda's abortion laws. I'd be interested to now. But, but there's going to be things in Uganda that aren't perfect. But it seems like at least with this, and I'm sure there could be mixed motives in here too, but the general direction here is a good one. Yes. And uh, the direction they're headed in is much better than the one we're headed in. No question. I, I like what, one, what I believe is a sign you said there. Um, they're talking about the Creator. You know, God, the Creator, his fa again, His favorite creation is people. And this homosex and abortion are a direct a attack against His favorite creation. And let's not forget that. And, and for Christians who are listening to this, who are like scratching your head, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Right. Uh, it shouldn't be that difficult. God told us to fill this earth up with people. It's the first command. Chris is the first command that he gave to us. His first command was let there be light. Okay. But to us people, it's subdue this earth, fill it up with people. And these things are such an attack on that. So I don't see how any person who says they believe the Bible, Christian, can I have a problem here? Right. Well, we're going to talk about that. And before we get into to Ted Cruz's comments, let's look a little bit more at what we, where we agree with the bill, where we might disagree, just to kind of look at this and just to give a couple points. Now, again, by the, Uganda, 84% Christian, according to you know, the stats, 34% evangelical. Um, so, so a lot of Roman, I guess, Catholic. That's Roman Catholics. Yeah. There's also, as far as evangelical, there's Pentecostal. There, there'd, be, there'd be a lot of... I'm sure there's Anglicans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, there, you know, there'd be some things we agree, disagree with. But generally speaking, um, they're trying to deal with this issue. Yeah. And in fact, let's, let's start where we, where we agree uh, with the bill, some of the things we agree with. Um, and I think we'd agree that, as he mentioned in that clip, there's, there's not a crime for identifying as a homosexual. Right. Yeah, that was very clear. Um, and the text actually says, they have in the text of the bill, for the avoidance of doubt, a person who is alleged or suspects of being a homosexual who has not committed a sexual act with another person of the same sex does not commit the offense of homosexuality under this section. So it's very clear. Now, I think in an earlier version, that wasn't in there. And so that's why some of the news outlets said this is a watered down version, but they still say it's, you know, just a horrible thing. But, I mean, I think that was a good, good decision by the who it was it parliament i think reviewed it and did it and and these are the questions and the discussions we should be having hey how do we deal with this and they ended up coming out where you'd say the bible does right that there's there's, there's not a crime right for identifying as a homosexual only for the act not not a crime for marching in a parade um you you have not committed a an act worthy of punishment according to the bible definition as i understand it the prohibition is actually lying with a man as you would with a woman that, that's, that's what you have to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so I think that, that was a, another good thing here that they're, they're seriously considering this. They were open to, to modify it, and they're trying to, to be wise and judicious about this. Yeah. Um, where we might disagree, maybe the life in prison thing. Yeah. Uh, but that is another issue because we have argued that biblically you shouldn't have a prison system. Right. Um, and, and biblically the penalty for the homosexual act could be up to including death. Mm -hmm. So you have Leviticus 20.13, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death, their blood is upon them. So, yeah, we might disagree with the, the prison, um, but, uh, you know, that's the system they have, and they're not changing that right now. So they're trying to deal with this in, in that way. Yeah, you know, J Josiah, um, during his reforms and revival, if you will, apparently the homosexuals had moved right into the temple and were set, set up there. As far as I can tell, he threw them out. I don't know if that was a capital offense or not. I can't, I can't tell from the passage. But he did a good thing by throwing them out. That's right. for sure. Right. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that would be a point where they should look at this again and say, okay, well, is exile an option? Is something else an option? Are they willing to extend that, that death penalty for you know, repeat offenses of, of the homosexual act. Mm -hmm. But as it stands now, um, it is up to life in prison for the homosexual act. Now, uh, and, and let's not forget, Chris, um, we, have, we have capital punishment here as well for, for much less. Our capital punishment is for short people who exist. Let's, let's not forget about that. Oh, capital punishment, terrible. Uh, no, we, we have capital punishment in this country, millions uh, since Roe versus Wade. And what is the crime of the baby? The crime of the baby is existing. Crime, the baby didn't do anything. Right. Yeah. I want to read a passage from Romans, uh, and then we're going to move on from this and talk about President Biden and Ted Cruz. But just a final couple comments on the application of this, this moral law from, from the Scripture, from the Old Testament Scripture in Leviticus. And, and in Romans, of course, Paul reaffirms this idea of the, the, the wickedness of homosexuality. And he says... In Romans 1, 24, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Obviously it doesn't get much clearer than that. I, I know the homosexuals try to wriggle around that and say, well, uh, Paul's not teaching that, but um, clearly affirming what's taught in Leviticus, the moral law, that this is a, a, a violation, a gross violation of God's created order. I want to read one quote here from Vern Poitras and then give you a chance to comment. He says, um, He's talking about how in Old Testament Israel they had to deal with, with these sins, and he says, we still have to reckon with the fact that sexual perversion disrupts the general order of society. Perhaps this very fact, this fact by itself is enough to warrant a severe reciprocal penalty. If a person disrupts the order of society, society ought to disrupt the order of the offender, possibly even in the form of maximum disruption, namely the death penalty. All right, and this is in his book, The Shadow of Christ and the Law of Moses, and he goes into some different things. And, but he comes out here and says, okay, well, yeah, here's what happened in Old Testament Israel, but this was a moral issue, and sexual sin still disrupts society, and it might be proper to apply this maximum penalty of death um, in this case. Well, it seems like the, the Ugandans, Chris, have figured that out. We haven't, but it seems like they have. They said, look, either this is going to disrupt our society, or we're going to disrupt it. Yeah. But the, the, the two are not going to go along together. And they have, they have figured that out. Now, some people are going to say, well, yeah, you know, you know we, we, we don't want to impose our Christianity and this kind of, a th uh, kind of a thing. I want to read the shortest psalm in all the Bible, which uh, uh, it's the shortest psalm in all the, uh, of all, which has, I, I, I would almost argue, the broadest application. Okay. Shortest psalm, broadest application. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the lord endures forever a call on all peoples to praise god and that his truth endures forever it endures here in the united states it endures in U uganda so if the ugandans are actually embracing the truth of the word of god which is a good thing then why aren't we rejoicing we should be right yeah and you mentioned there that 
they recognize this is either going to disrupt our society or yes. we will disrupt it. And that's, I don't know, it was Bonson or Rush Dooney, probably both of them, um, talking about the, these, these death penalty offenses in Scripture and how, really, if, if people don't deal with these sins, God will bring the death penalty on that o society. On the society. Yeah, and so yeah. That, that's why these, these Ugandans are saying we need to protect our nation. We need to protect the future of our children. Uh, or at least that's the application here. They're saying <clears throat> we, we need to do something because this is destroying our society. So, all right, we're going to move on now and talk about um, President Biden's response and Ted Cruz's response to, to, to the act. Okay, so uh, on May 29th, President Biden released a statement, statement from President Joe Biden on the enactment of Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality Act. And uh, he's not happy, of course. Uh, he said this is a tragic violation of universal human rights one that is not worthy of the Ugandan people, and one that jeopardizes the prospects of critical economic growth for the entire country. Now, Oh, I think I see a threat there. <laughs> I, I think I see one. Yeah, and he's going to talk about, basically, this is kind of a threat to, to pull the funding for mm -hmm. all these different programs. You have a plan for, uh, the pres emergency plan for AIDS relief, the African Growth and Opportunity Act. But Joel, when I first read the, the first line here, well, actually, what poses a more critical threat to the economic growth would be celebrating sin. Yeah. So, you know, if you want the society to prosper, then you're not going to be so. And that reminds me of what uh, the Kenyan president years ago was talking to Obama, President Obama, and they were going back and forth. And then a, n a news outlet had the Kenyan president on, and they're all into these gay rights and stuff. And the Kenyan president's just like, we don't care about this stuff. I don't, why do you guys keep talking about it? We in Kenya do not care about this stuff. That is not what we're focused on. And, uh, of course, the Ugandans now are, are going the next step and saying, yeah, we don't want to focus on this either, but it's being forced upon us uh, partly by all these outside influences coming in. Um, and so they're saying, hey, we're going to deal with it. And, and President Biden says, basically, you know, we've given a b $1 billion. We give $1 billion annually, nearly $1 billion dollars. And uh, we might not give that anymore. Oh, yeah. That'll fix them. Well, you know, uh, economic growth, right? I want to know how you can have, I'm, I'm no economist as such, but how can you have economic growth without uh, population growth? Mm -hmm. uh, from all, every economic evaluation I have ever seen, Chris, every one, talks about the fact that when you have a shrinking population, you have built-in economic problems when that happens. So if you're going to, again, if you're going to introduce homosex here and promote it, you're going to have a, a shrinking population, which we apparently have here in the United States. I mean, I, uh, in a more direct uh, correl correlative sphere, if you will, I know someone very well who is in the uh, baby, um, they call it the juvenile business, where they make baby swings and, okay. and so forth for you know, uh, car seats and so forth. Well, guess what's taking a beating right now in this in this nation? Um, that business because people are having less less uh, babies. Well, what do you think is going to happen down the road? You know, other products that go to older people that's going to have an effect. And so Biden here talking about economic problems, he's he's exactly wrong on this point. Yeah, he's 180 degrees wrong. Yeah, and you know th this this whole theme here or this is instance brings up the bigger theme of the international desire to really spread this one world religion mm -hmm. of secular humanism. Mm -hmm. And you have these Ugandans here who have unfortunately bought into that a little bit, probably with, you know, some of this funding and some of this stuff right. from the UN, but they're kind of now saying, uh, maybe this is not really good for us uh, because there's one, the, there's a guy, named, uh, his name is Asuman Basali, Basilara, Ra, I don't know, I told you I get all the names wrong. He's a member of the Ugandan parliament. I think he's the one who, who moved the bill. So he's one of the main sponsors of this bill. And he applauded the passage, of course. And he said that uh, the Ugandans have to stand firm despite this opposition from the other nations. So he said this, he said, we have no choice but to stand our ground. Otherwise, if we don't stand our ground, this is what is going to happen. Next time, they will bring another condition on our laws. Don't pass this law. If you do, then X, Y, or Z is going to happen. So if we don't stand our ground as a country, as a people, as a community, then we will completely have seceded our sovereignty and independence as a country. This is a Ugandan parliamentarian who put forward the bill saying, we need to start taking a stand to this. I mean, that's good news yep. because, you know, the UN and, and 
America, and all, they're, they're going to say, hey, Ugandans, you need to control your population. Yeah. You need to do all these things. You need to you know, abort these yeah. babies. And the Ugandans, hopefully with this, are going to start to say, wait a minute, you guys obviously don't have the best interests in mind of our nation. Yeah. And, and even the whole idea of this, this, where do we get this idea that this constant inflow of um, American dollars is needed for these poor African countries? Uh, Chris, they can never be productive on their own. Right. Oh, no. No. We, we, we have to have, wait a second. I think that's the biggest fear here, quite frankly. I think the fear is that countries like Uganda would become self-sufficient and would become independent of the U.S. dollars. Yep. I actually think that's a, that's a big fear here. Yeah, you're probably right. And you know that would be a great thing, and Christians should be praying for that for Absolutely. the Ugandan people, that they could be free from the evil influence of these global powers and that they would be blessed and prosper and have more yeah. and, 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 and grow and um, maybe... We might have to move to Uganda one day. I don't know the directions things are going now. But, um, okay, so... At least your children might be a little bit safer. So the, uh, the Speaker of the Parliament is a woman. Anita Among is her name. And she had, you heard this in the clip, she had her U.S. visa revoked following the passage of the bill. So um, this, this other parliamentarian said she was the first victim of their stance against th these global powers. And uh, when, when, the, when the bill was passed... This speaker, this woman speaker, she tweeted, I now encourage the duty bearers under the law to execute the mandate bestowed upon them in the Anti-Homosexuality Act. Yeah. It's like, do your duty now. Yeah, do your job. And, yeah. uh, and punish evil. Yeah, so I, I, the only thing I wish, I wish they'd keep the, I don't know, well, I kind of feel like I wish they'd keep the media out because what's going to happen next, we already know what's going to happen next, we're going to get some tear-jerking story that may or may not even be close to what's true. Right. Uh, that's, that's what's going to happen to try to gin up more international support against U Uganda. I hope yeah. and pray that it has the opposite effect. I hope and pray that other African nations and other nations in general will take up this cause to say, you know what, we, we understand that we do not have a future if we embrace homosex. Yeah. You, you forget, Chris, forget about global warming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to have any people. Right. And um, now there's may, I think there's some rumors that maybe this will be challenged in their version of the Supreme, whatever Supreme Court they have. I mean, hopefully um, it, it remains, it's not overruled. But, and maybe that's uh, some silver lining, as there always is in these things in God's providential hand in history, that this, this celebration of this utter perversion, we look at Target and uh, Bud Light and how they're suffering for their stupidity. Um, and we see here maybe a silver lining with this push of this, this wicked agenda, maybe some nations will start to say that's enough. Yeah. And you could have the first steps of rolling back this global, you know, trying to enforce this stuff. Maybe some nations will start to say, we're going to, we don't, we've, we've kind of been lulled into this, but there's so many other things we shouldn't be receiving from these other nations as well. You know, you know Chris, I, I have a brother who spent some time in Uganda here a few years ago. And, you know, we talk about all this aid, right? And NGOs, non-governmental organizations are going to help, right? All from the West, Western dollars, Western capital, and all this kind of thing. And we're questioning that. Well, m my, uh, my brother, who, uh, who actually went to Kampala, um, the, the capital, the capital yeah. of, of Uganda, he talked about the fact that he said he saw this happening. He said these NGOs, and uh, at least with the NGOs, have the exact opposite effect. Mm -hmm. He said this is what he saw happening. He, he, said, he said he saw it. Um, you know, you, 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 have your, you have your markets, you have your place of doing business, people buy, they sell. Then all the NGO people move in to help, mm -hmm. right? Going to help you. He says immediately uh, with all this Western money, the prices for everything just goes way up. And all the people that they're supposed to be helping, the regular, regular people just doing business out in the street, just supporting their families, right. all of a sudden because of the NGOs and all the people, now they're paying a whole lot more money. So I... I I'd like to see what happens if, if the United States makes good on their, on their threats. Yeah. I want to see what happens with Uganda. They might be better off. Yeah, indeed. They might be. And, and certainly, if the spirit behind this is a genuine desire to punish evil and protect life, uh, then God's hand of blessing we would expect to be upon them, generally speaking. So uh, that would be a very good thing uh, if they were free and sovereign in that sense. So, all right. Um, let's go into Ted Cruz here now. Okay, Ted Cruz, a U.S. Senator from Texas, as you mentioned, son of a, a pastor, 
and not simply the son of a pastor, but he's really leaned into that. Yeah, he has. He, he's, he's spoken, a, I mean, I guess you could call it preaching at, at churches. They've invited him in. Yeah. He's, you know, we'll, we'll mention the Bible here and there and uh, really, you know, try to, and he, he's ran for president in the past, probably would like to again. But this is what he tweeted on May 29th. He said, this Uganda law is horrific and wrong. Any law criminalizing homosexuality or imposing the death penalty for aggravated homosexuality is grotesque and an abomination. Oh, we got a, got a biblical word in it, again it, here, don't we? Choice of we word. got backsliding before from Biden and now an abomination from, oh man. And then he says this, Joel, he says, all civilized nations should join together in condemning this human rights abuse. Hashtag, this is from Cruz, LGBTQ. Mm. So he, he even had to include that, you know, his posturing here to try to get as many uh. votes as he can. But, I mean, abomination, I read from Leviticus 20, the Bible, of which Ted Cruz will probably hold up in his hand to try to garner right. votes, calls homosexuality, the act, an abomination. Okay, and then he says all civilized nations. Uh, so a civilized nation should condemn this. So I guess he would say, um, you know, America is a civilized one here, celebrating and promoting homosexuality, transgenderism, abortion, and the Ugandans are uncivilized? Yeah, oh, you know, in any other context, there'd be, there'd be a firestorm. In this one, oh, well, you know. And that's what he's saying. He's saying this is, this is anti-civilization. But again, Chris, how can you have a civilization when you don't have any people that are civilized within it? Right, right. I mean, how long would it take? I mean, you know, we're seeing numbers of trans and self-identifying homo, we're seeing them, those numbers just go up and up. We know in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, where it, look, it appears if the entire city of Sodom was given over to homosexuality. And people will say, well, isn't that terrible that God rained down fire and brimstone on them? They were gonna, Chris, they were gonna starve themselves out in any case. Right. They, they were not going to be, and, and, and when, you, when you have an aging population, the only people can take care of you when you're aging, I hope, are people younger than me, right? right? Well, I'm 85 years old and can't move anymore or whatever. It's going to be younger people that have to take care. What if they don't have any? Right. You're just going to die a slow, horrific death. Right. Um, so Ted Cruz said that, you know, this is horrific. This is an abomination. He said that it's ridiculous to, uh, to imprison people for, for consenting adults who engage in gay sex. That's all from Ted Cruz. Now, there's a... a a Twitter account from a man in Uganda. In the, the old consenting adults. It looks like a whole country full of consenting adults right. uh, voted for this. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Where's the, the democracy? So, um, or the, the the praise for democracy here, I guess, like it's a backsl backslidden democracy. Yeah, backslidden like and, a, and an abomination. Yeah. So the, this Twitter account from a guy based in Kampala, Uganda, the capital there, he responded to Ted Cruz and said, hey, most of the Ugandans just want to protect their kids, man. Like, we want to protect our children from homosexuality. He said, we need to protect minors at all costs. The law is actually not draconian as people may wish to put it. It allows us to preserve our values and stay away from this sin and vice. Like, I mean, th that's the bottom line. Th th the Ugandans, are, they do not want this. And you're trying to push it on them. And they say, no, keep this away from our nation, from our children. Um, <clears throat> all right. Any other comment on Ted Cruz? Because I want to move into Charlie Kirk here. Okay, no, um, only about Ted Cruz. Ted, um, do you believe the Bible or not, bro? Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, we'll get into that here with this. this so I want to play this clip from, from Charlie Kirk. I don't know when this is from, um, but there's, there's a, I'll play it. It's, it's a couple minutes, but someone's asking a question, too. If you're just listening to this, there's two people on the stage. There's Charlie Kirk, and there's another gentleman who, who says he's a homosexual Christian. He claims to be a Christian. And so those are the two guys on the stage. I think the, the other gentleman is Rob. Uh, the other man is Rob. And then uh, you got Charlie Kirk. And so this guy in the, in the audience is asking a question to Charlie Kirk because he wants Charlie Kirk to answer. And you'll see that the other guy's like, well, no, I should be. You don't. And Charlie Kirk's like, you're not even asking the homosexual. And the guy wanted Charlie Kirk to answer because it's a very good question that he asked Charlie Kirk. So let's watch this, this clip and then we'll talk about it. All right. My question is largely directed to Mr. Kirk because you were raised as a conservative. Part of the issue I see here is, um, what's your name, Rob? Yeah. So you're saying, oh, this, you're behind the times, this isn't conservative. Well, we don't want centrists in the conservative movement. We want to retain our core values. Yeah, but here's we the thing. We don't want drag But here's the thing, but here's the thing. It's not about what you want because here's the thing. The beauty, the beauty about social media, the beauty about social media 
is that I can be me and I can bring myself to the table. And it's not about what you want, it's about the, what the people want. And if there are enough people in this movement that, are say, that say, hey, Rob is cool, he's gay, whatever, it really doesn't matter what you think. You can say whatever you want and you can believe, so they, you can believe whatever you want to believe. Let me ask my question. But it's not going to stop me from yeah. doing what I'm doing. Get, get and it's not going to deplatform me. So, so my question is, again, it's directed to Mr. Kirk because he was raised as a conservative. Um, you know, as the guy before has said, you know, you've advocated for homosexuality, said that there's a place for the gay agenda within the conservative movement. My question is, uh, and you're also comfortable with transgenders and cross-dressers, I understand. Um, so my question is, is there, is there any, pl any point um, where conservatives should take a moral stance on Christian morality, or should we abandon it altogether. So in other words, what is TPUSA's, what is your brand of conservatism doing to actually conserve Christian morality? If we're ceding to the left on transgender, gay rights, gay marriage, we don't want that in conservatism. So you don't want him in the conservative movement? I just want to be very clear. Let's just be... So, so, you don't, so you don't want me in the movement? Hold on a sec. I want to be very clear. Hold on a sec. I, 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 you know, you're, you're bringing some very charged language. I'm going to try to calm down the temperature in the room yeah. so I can try to rationally understand an irrational position. Why should we, why should we Let me finish. Our Let me finish. Let me finish. So I'm a Christian. I believe the Bible is the greatest book ever to exist in the history of the world. And I believe Rob Smith has decency and dignity as an individual in the United States of America. Of Hold on a second. We're not a theocracy. We it's never have been. I and you know what? And wait a minute. And wait a minute. Let me hop in here. Hold on. Because I, cause I'm in it. He's addressing me. Yeah. No, the, thing that, the thing that I don't understand, well, I'm addressing well, you. How you about that? You don't even have the so courage to address the gay man on, on stage. So, 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 so the, the problem that I have with, um, as somebody that is a gay Christian, and this is the problem that I have, because my relationship with God and coming back into the church over the past year and a half is one of the greatest gifts that has been given to me in terms of being in this movement. So, so, so my question and my question to everybody who tries to say that, oh, you shouldn't be, you know, Christian because you're gay. Why are you trying to turn people away from God? So if you love God if you and love Christianity God, is so right, because I do love God, so why would you be trying to turn me away? Why would you be trying to turn me away from God? So we're, we're going to get another to, thing, and, and one thing that I don't do, question. and one thing that. I All right, that was uh, Charlie Kirk. What do you think, Joel? Uh, Charlie Kirk, uh, boy, I mean, he's tied with Ted Cruz. I mean, it's a classic. Um, Fake right, go left, I guess. You know, like, hey, I love the Bible. It's a great book. So what does it have to do with this discussion? Apparently, absolutely nothing. Right. Then what's so great about it, I, I would want to know. I mean, what, and, and the questioner is right. What are we conserving? Great question. Yeah, I, I love the question. I, I want to know what, that's really what he was asking. Yeah. Conser we're conservatives. Conserving what yeah. exactly? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Charlie Kirk, I mean, I, I've never listened to him that much. I did see him speak at the last Remember America event. Yes. And I was not impressed, yeah. um, to be honest. And he, he, there was this background of Christianity, but nothing specific. And I think after watching this clip, and if people see this, I mean, Christians should have really no interest in what Charlie Kirk is promoting. I mean, there's no reason to get behind. And you've, you've mentioned this to me. He, he, he's Democrat Junior. I mean, give him a little time. Right. And, and he'll be exactly what the left is saying. And he's supposed to be a conservative? Yeah. And, and, he's cl and again, they're claiming to be Christian and saying, you know, the Bible is the greatest book ever written. And, and, then, and then you hear this from him. Yeah. I mean, clapping, you yeah. know, he's, if, you, if, you saw, if you're listening, he's, he's you know, hitting his knee because he's got to be either a bottle or a water bottle or a microphone when, when this, this guy who claim, claims to be a homosexual Christian is saying, this has been the greatest thing that, you know, God has yeah. accepted me. And, and all these things, and Charlie Kirk's there applauding it. Yeah. So why are Christians supporting or interested in Charlie Kirk? Yeah, yeah. And, and don't, uh, you, you know, we're all about, well, I'll, I'll just back, take a step back here for a little bit. You know, Christians will say, um, believe the Bible. Then, then it comes down to, they want to talk about the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes down to it, they just only want to talk about, I don't know, maybe Paul's epistles. And then it's just the words of Christ in red. Right. And then it's just some of the words of Christ in red, right. right? Well, here's some words of Christ in red. If you love me, and Rob said, I love God. 
if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Written in red there. Now, okay, so Charlie Kirk, so the guy, the guy's question was great. And it was Charlie Kirk just great. brushes it off. Oh, this is an irrational question. Right. I need to respond. Well, back. he makes it personal. Are you saying he shouldn't be in the movement? That's not what the guy was asking. The guy was asking, should these ideas mm -hmm. that he, yes, this man represents, and apparently you too, Charlie, right. represent, should they be in the conservative movement? And Charlie Kirk is saying, yes. Yeah, he did not deny any of it. You know, the cross-dressing, the transgender, the, you know, he, he didn't deny it there. He had an opportunity to. Um, great question from the questioner. And, and so, yeah, he, he does this, you know, this tactic here to say, oh, well, you know, you don't want this, you don't want this guy in, in the movement I mean, that, that's what, what if you had like a group of, uh, of, of capitalists, of free market people, which Charlie Kirk, I think, would probably say, oh, I'm free yeah, market yeah. capitalism. I'm all about it. Yeah. And then you had, you had Bernie Sanders there. Yeah. And would, Ber would Charlie Kirk be like, and there's two guys on stage, and you're like, we want Bernie Sanders in our movement. And would Charlie Kirk say, yeah, I want Bernie Sanders in this movement? Well, uh, you, you would maybe want him in the movement if he stopped being a socialist. Right. right. And, and so that's the same thing here. Like, do, do, do you, it's, it's more of a, you know, it's an emotional appeal argument. Oh, you don't want this guy? Well, not as he is, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if he's willing to change and, and obey the yeah. Bible, which this questioner is coming from, the, the, the conservative movement should be Christian, which I think is the issue that we're going to get to here. And uh, I, I think that he would say, if this guy is willing to change, of course he should be in yeah. the movement. I, I can't lie. I was disappointed with Charlie Kirk did that personal thing, right? Uh, you know, when, when the question came back to him the second time, right. now it looks like it's because Rob saves him the first time, right? Right. right. Okay, now Charlie's getting it. Are you saying this man should? Uh, come on. Come on. Be, be honest. Yeah, and Charlie, and then he has the audacity to say that you don't have the courage to address the gay man. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's not what his question was. Right. I'm sure that guy would be fine addressing him, but he wanted you to answer, which, you, yeah. which he wouldn't. Yeah. He wouldn't answer it. Um, so yeah, very disappointing. But I don't. Not to be. Um, uh oh. Wait a minute. Did he say gay, man? Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. How dare he? Um, so, but this takes us back to Joel. I mean, you, you've mentioned how the conserv Ted Cruz and, and these guys and even Charlie Kirk. I'd say. I mean, it's just a big waste of energy. Yeah. That's what you told me the other day. That this conservative movement. And I think that's the questioner's point. If we're not going to be seeking to honor Christ in all this, what is the point of it? Yep. Yep. We're, we're, we're failing at, at, Chris, at best we're wasting our time. At, at worst, we're not giving God the credit that he deserves, not thanking Christ for what he's done for us. Because our freedom in, in this country and our success goes directly back to Jesus Christ. I, I, was, I was just reading um, I, uh, um, the opinion of uh, Holy Trinity versus the U.S., written in 18, 1892. And Justice Brewer said, you know, he said, like, like, look around. He said, we have all kinds of churches here. We don't have, a, we, we, we don't have any uh, universities created by Muslims or Buddhists or whatever. Now, this is in 1892. The, the United States of America is well over 100 years at this point. And he's saying what should be said at the time, what we should be saying today, is that our success as a nation goes directly back to Jesus Christ Amen. and no other source. Amen. And that's, that's the problem. So with this Uganda law happening, and you see now, Obviously, that wasn't a response from Kirk to the Uganda law, but I think we could guess based on that response. But you see Ted Cruz and these, I mean, if that's the conservative movement's response to what's happening, I mean, do we need any other information for Christians to say this movement is bankrupt, it's useless, it, it's not conserving anything, it's not advancing anything righteous? And so, I mean, that's a litmus test, I think, that find me the conservative in America that is willing to applaud the Ugandans here. And then there might be someone that I would be interested in, in listening to. But if not, why are we fooling ourselves by getting excited about Charlie Kirk and Turning Point USA and, oh, we're going to turn back to, you know, the, the social... No, we're not. What, what are we turning it back to? Right. What, what, turning Point USA, we're turning from what to what? From sin to more sin, I guess. I, I, yeah, I have no idea what we're turning to. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, and that's the problem here. So... You know, very disappointing from Charlie Kirk. He said, oh, we're going to go to the next question now. Did not an could, he did not answer the question. No, he never did. He, could, you he know, never did. Answer that question. So, um, again, 1 Corinthians 6, as we wrap up here, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Paul says, he says, do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, 
nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So if Rob there would repent of that, then yes, come into this movement. But again, I think the conservative movement is, is demonstrating that it's bankrupt. Yeah. And you have people like that questioner who are seeing that. So what happens in the future? I mean, that's the question here for America. What's going to, you know, what, are, are enough Christians going to say, hey, the conservative movement is bankrupt. These, these leaders, these Ted Cruz's, these Charlie Kirk's, they reject the biblical stance. They, they reject what Uganda is doing. And we're going to reject the conservative movement and we need a Christian movement. I mean, I, I want to go back to uh, Jeroboam, if I may. And uh, Jeroboam was, of course, a uh, king in, in northern Israel, the northern ten tribes. Uh, the tribe of Judah and Benjamin and perhaps Simeon somewhat had, had revolted. or that, Actually, it was the ten northern tribes that had revolted. In any case, Jeroboam doesn't want the people to go, to, to go down to Judah to worship the real gods, uh, the true gods. So he's at, at, at Bethel, which means house of God, he sets up idols. And he says, you know, I'm going to be able to keep this thing together politically. I mean, it was smart from a, uh, from a, a, sectar a sectarian or, or point of view, I suppose. Um, we're going to set up these idols here, and that way they won't go down to Judah and become loyal to Judah. Um, they're, they're going to worship these, uh, these idols. Well, here's the thing. Uh, over time, Ahab comes along, and he sets up Baal worship, which was horrible, wicked. Baal worship ultimately gets wiped out from Israel. And so you know what happens then with the, with the succeeding kings after that happens? They don't go back to Christ. They go back to the golden calves. To me, that is the conservative yeah. movement. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's conservatives. Yeah. Anything but Christ. Right. Let's, go, let's go back the way it was. Yeah. Well, if you're not going back to Christ, you're just as bad. Right. Yeah. Amen. Well, y Uganda... Uh, the conservative movement should take a lesson from the Ugandans here, and Christians all over the world should be praying for Uganda because they're Amen. gonna they're gonna have um, the global ire upon them for their uh, the audacity to side with biblical morality instead of uh, the perversion. So we'll be following this and see what happens. Um, for more information about Joel Saint, go to irbc.church. For more information about the Lancaster Patriot, go to thelancasterpatriot.com. Until next time, God bless and Godspeed.